Okay guys, the next project is we're going to put a 2000 watt inverter in the T-Van. Now I know a lot of people will say, what do you want a 2000 watt inverter for? It's going to cook your batteries, it's too much power for what you need. It's a bit like having 200 kilowatts in my Land Cruiser. I don't use it all the time, I might only need it for a short period of time, but it's good to know it's there. In our case it's mainly for either a coffee machine or an induction cooktop. Okay, so to walk you through what we're trying to do here, you can see that each battery has a maximum continuous discharge current of 95 amps. 95 amps is well over a thousand watts that this battery can supply continuously. And of course we've got two batteries, one on each side of the T-van. So to help you visualize the wiring, we're going to upgrade the rather flimsy factory wiring. We're going to go to double zero BNS, which is 50 odd square millimeters. So this wire will carry the 95 amps from this battery across to this battery, and then we're going to parallel. We're going to double it. So we've got 95 amps from battery one, 95 amps from battery two, more than enough current capacity in these wires for a 2000 watt inverter. Now, of course, we're going to put a fuse to protect the wiring from this battery, and we're going to upgrade the fuse on this battery as well. Similarly with the ground wiring, we're going to upgrade the ground wire from battery 1, double it when we get to battery 2, and this is going to go to the shunt, which is buried in the back here, and we're going to use that for a power monitoring and we'll bring it to the inverter as well. To go from the TVMS unit to the inverter, we've got a data cable. And that'll simply plug in to the inverter and run into the red arc control in the back there. Now, hopefully that helps you visualize what we're doing. The actual physical installation, we're going to mount this in the side box under the bed. So we're going to remove this plywood panel here to put some screws through and mount it in the side box. And unfortunately, you can see here that when track install their cables from the factory, they don't gland them, they just Sikaflex or silicon seal the cables through the box, which is a bit unfortunate because it makes it hard to do an upgrade like this. You can see all the wiring is just in behind this big goop of silicon and it's not particularly well finished in my view compared to what I would be used to as an electrician. Okay so the factory wiring we can see comes from the battery around through a 60 amp fuse and disappears into that gluey mess through the side of the battery box, runs under the camper and across to this side where the positive goes to this terminal here where the two batteries are brought together and the negatives come up to the shunt through the shunt and down to our ground stud when you're with me I feel right when you're around Trouble when life rains. 
my parade. Welcome to the next day. We finished the lithium insulation last night. And as you can see, I've had it on charge. We're now at 100% because the batteries, because uh, we had the batteries disconnected, we had to reset the Red Arc TVMS system and it had to re establish battery capacity, which tends to happen when you leave these disconnected for a little while. So now fully charged, and we're going to run a little test this morning just to see how that inverter works. But before we do, You can see that it's quite congested. The battery box in the T-Van is very small. There's one on each side. We've got a 50 square mil cable running through. I've got some corrugated protection on there. And then we've got positive and negative cables coming up from this battery. We've got the same coming up from the other. The negative cables go to the shunt, which you can just see in the back there and that's so that the red arc system can measure the current flow to the inverter and our positives go to a 250 amp mega fuse which is the red arc recommendation for this inverter and then we go to our parallel 50 square mil actives and our two parallel 50 square mil negatives go through grommets into the next compartment. We've also got our data cable from the inverter for the remote switching and we bring back a, a cable for power into the rear of the cabin. We'll put all of that back together today once we've done this test. If we go around to the inverter You see we've mounted the inverter onto the roof of the right hand storage locker. I would prefer to have put it on the back so I don't lose storage height. But this panel is a little flimsy. It's only a backing panel for the sink plumbing and the like. We've got some cables to sort out there. So we're going to do a load test on the inverter. To do that I'm going to plug my 1500 watt hot air gun directly into the inverter's output. I mentioned we've got the inverter set up for remote activation here on the red vision screen so we'll turn that on and then we'll come across and you'll see the current ramp up when the inverter kicks in. Hundred twenty five amps at twelve point six, call it twelve point five volts. So if we do a couple of quick sums, twelve point five times one two five equals fifteen sixty two watts. So as mentioned, I've connected the new 2000 watt inverter using the data cable to put to the Red Arc system. So I can remotely switch it on my phone or using this soft key here. However, I'd still like to remotely switch this existing 350 watt inverter. That'll enable us to turn it off and on with our phone. If we accidentally close the camper up, it'll let me um, also activate it using the soft keys However, to remotely operate a second inverter on the Red Arc system, you can't rely on a data cable. They will only let you do one inverter at a time, but you can use the digital input of the inverter to trigger it. And to do that, we're going to use one of the output channels of the distribution box. So I'll open this up so that we can access the outgoing channels of the distribution box and also access the remote input channels of the inverter. Okay, so we've finished all of the modifications now and I'll just walk you through what we've done. We installed a new 2000 watt inverter. 
we've also included another power outlet off that inverter in the cabin here so that we can power devices such as an induction cooktop if the weather outside is a bit nasty and we want to cook inside without the danger of a gas flame inside the canvas. We've also connected the kitchen outlets that many of you will be familiar with to the 2000 watt inverter so we can run a coffee machine, induction cooktop, that type of thing out in the kitchen. We've connected the 2000 watt inverter to a TVMS channel and we've called it 240 volts and that's using the regular red arc remote control function. Now that meant we had to disconnect the integral 350 watt inverter from that data feed and instead we've connected it as a digital output of the distribution box and we've put it on its own soft key just there so that now we can control both inverters from the TVMS screen. We can also control them both from our telephone if we go into the app you can see that we can go into the Red Vision app and control those inverters on our telephone as well. So if we lock the T-Van up and realise we've left the inverters on, we can easily shut them off on our phone. Likewise, if we're in bed, that type of thing. Now to make those changes to the display, we use the Red Arc Configurator app. Yes, we want to connect and it'll connect to the TVMS device. It'll download, it'll download the current configuration. And what I've done is save the original track TVAN configuration. And then I've created a copy of that file and I've modified it to suit our situation here. So I can reconfigure the T-Van back to its original setup at any time just by going back to that saved um, to that saved program. So as I mentioned, we just go into display and we can change all of our soft keys. We can move them around, put them on different pages. In this case, page one, we mix what I've got there, and page two. Mimics what we've got on the TVMS. So if you have a TVAN and you've gone with the Red Arc upgrade, there's quite a bit of flexibility there. It's quite easy to configure the screen to look how you would want it to be, so it's more intuitive perhaps. And if you do change any of your inputs and outputs, you can make the corresponding change on your screen. Right. I'm in the better life.